Okay, my name is Clément Blanchet. Um, I'm an architect, an urbanist, and I'm teaching uh, in Michigan, in Paris, and sometime in Sweden. And you are here in my office, uh, Villa Sora, 15 Villa Sora. It's a dead end, maybe the office is the end, but uh, it's a nice um, surrounding in Paris um, that was established by l'URSA as a master planning in the 20s, and here is the atelier. Perfect. You have very nice space here. Thanks. Uh, Clement, I want to ask you on how did you start the studio and the kind of projects that you're doing today? Well, I, I started the studio after a long therapy. OMA for me is a therapy of discovering who you are. So I decided I knew who I was. <laughs> so I jumped into uh, the other type of life and uh, creating another uh, decision of creating a uh, own store office and I always wanted to be able to be uh, good at things that I don't know at first because I think it's a way you can create and so my office is structured such it's not specific we have global knowledge and specific solutions um, so in that sense I'm trying to uh, structure the office so it's pluridisciplinary and um, we have different types of knowledge so we can do very very small design of a knife or a furniture to a master plan in China in Shenzhen of uh, 500,000 square meters uh, questioning the landscaping so the office is, is very much a moment of creativity related to program and, and, and trying to be specific. So if a client call us or if we are doing a competition, we will transform uh, the reality and, and the questioning of the context. Uh, so we are not specific. And in a practical way, how was for you to start an office in uh, Paris, uh, in France, in this context? Well, I think um, I had to find different ways of uh, identifying which type of market, which type of client I could work with, uh, and also I jumped on the, you know, the wave of the Reinventer Paris and all of those questioning of being smart at a certain moment, defining investors, promoters, so we can apply our knowledge of creativity with different scenarios of, of doing the city. So it was good time for me because, you know, I I I, I wanted to. I wanted to be capable of uh, structuring different ways of doing things and for me I, I, I discovered that it was the right move so at first it's super complicated, it's super hard and it's super uh, dangerous uh, but at the end uh, the danger and the fact that uh, it's another type of resistance you know, you resist comfort, you resist things and, and you create again and for me it was very important in my life that I had this moment of, you know, I was at Oma and it was extraordinary experience, but then at some point I had to reinvent to be uh, creative again. And this was very important in the move and my personal experience. So this was a jump and the jump is currently fracturing. Ah, very good. And in this uh, jump, what do you think uh, have been your biggest learnings? Um, my biggest learning was failure because uh, by failing you are understanding uh, whether you can improve or whether you can question yourself and uh, all of the sudden uh, your your own way to the reality of things and so there is no cover the myth of Oma or um, the presence of uh, media so you are capable to be stronger and now we have 50 projects that I will sometime soon uh, launch on my website. Um, but now I have the body of myself ready. And so it's like a, a jump to, you know, cycles. I, I like cycles because otherwise life is too stable and, and I need cycle. I think crisis provide you creativity. A good training. <laughs> And in this context, how helpful, helpful has been the, um, the competition system here in France in relation to opportunities? Um, I think uh, the good thing in France is that you still have a lot of um, national competitions with public money. And this is taken quite seriously. Um, 
there is still the ability to have anonymous juries, uh, so it's not totally corrupted. <laughs> um, and, um, and in that sense, um, because we are always questioning the program or targeting different scales and, and, and mainly um, define the evidence of architecture through the question of urbanism or the context itself, um, the fact that I am very French, at the same time I don't want to be only French, um, I am able to be my own insider of my own culture. And because I have time spent elsewhere and I work in different countries and cities, I'm capable to be highly critical to the context. And in that sense, it's very good opportunity for me because um, whenever I open uh, a discussion or a debate about one project, I will be very capable to go from bottom to top. And this is super nice because um, in France, you have those competitions and, and, and Sting still moves. And, and, and it's good for creativity. Yeah, right. And in that aspect, and, and you mentioned the programs, the evolution of programs, the, the need for contemporary yeah. solutions. Uh, the kind library was uh, very strong in relation to this, to do a library today that is not an archive, that is a public space, it's crossing X, it's mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. central void. Uh, how do you see the importance of these contemporary answers especially in recent projects such as the, um, this new stadium and the cultural center that, uh, at least from a first glance, you see that they try to, to seek for these responses. Well, I think uh, architecture is, um, is an opinion on urbanism, an opinion on, on cultures. And uh, I, I kind of like the idea that, um, you know, um, Sometimes you have a very authoritarian and modern architecture, but I truly believe that modernity is not only in the image and the shape, but um, in its actual programming and in its actual thinking. So that's why, for instance, uh, we won a stadium by not doing a stadium, because we reversed the question and, and it wasn't kind of a crazy shape or a crazy unidentified object in a city where the mayor can play his own, you know, proudness of the architecture as a, as a you know, as a goal. Uh, but I am more interested in, for instance, in this project that you were mentioning, the stadium in Saint-Ouen in the suburb of Paris, uh, a competition we won before the summer. Um, how can we define not anymore an isolated uh, signature as an architect or an isolated uh, piece of architecture but more of an urban fabric that rea react and address to the city so in that sense we still have the presence of the stadium and the stadium is at the bottom of the floor so it's connecting the city and we have an actual stadium and then we propose an, a new um, mixing chamber building where you have um, actual uh, commercials and offices uh, kind of overviewing the stadium and making the filter to the city. So the stadium is not anymore a gate and it's not anymore uh, an isolated uh, sport thing, but it's becoming an urban uh, device. And this was the actual strategy, for instance, that allow us to, to win probably with a score as a partner architect. And um, I think it's super interesting to be able to perform this way. So I think you, we have to do intelligence of our, the architecture of the future is, is not anymore about the architect, but about the architecture. And I think it's super important to be capable to play, you know, this tricky thing where, you know, it's not, I know that the architecture has no value except is ima the image of it. So we have to play between image and thinking and programming and context and geography, economies. I think architecture should not be driven by architecture, but by other phenomena. And so if, if I respond to your question on the circus, for instance, the competition of the circus was uh, just asking ourselves, what is the meaning of a circus yesterday, today and tomorrow? And we propose to combine the three times into one building. So yesterday it was amphitheater sunken in the ground with a circular shape 
And then today is all the technology and the media and the light and the device of technology, above which we have a tent. And the tent is actually the metaphor of um, today's uh, thinking uh, collective memory of what a circus is. So the sandwich of it becomes the architecture I delivered for the competition. So it was a statement about um, about thinking the definition of what a circus could be. Yeah, and, and well, in, in, the, in these uh, programs or these projects, uh, they are very related to the European type of city, a city with a certain intensity, with a mm -hmm. certain history, mm -hmm. uh, with icons. Mm -hmm. But you also are expanding and uh, you are uh, doing projects abroad in places mm -hmm. where the, we could say there is a tabula rasa mm -hmm. or in the middle of the nature. How do you approach this different type of context? Yeah, I, I always feel guilty when I have to build <laughs> because it's very unsustainable. But at the same time, I'm trying to be uh, uh, to find the evidence of architecture by the questioning of urbanism or landscape. And um, for instance, I'm chief architect advisor in Annecy. It's the southeast of France. So I go every month and I debate uh, architecture and these kind of questions. And, and I always try to phrase myself in a situation that even if I'm 38, I should be resonating if I'm 150. So I am trying to be capable to resonate time and, and not think only the image, but like what is the actual social impact of what we do. And uh, sometimes you have to end build to better build Sometimes you have to be, you know, just let the landscape. Uh, Sometimes you have to build with a prefab solution. Sometimes you have to be considering that um, you build only for five years and you know that it's going to get demolished. Or I'm, I'm trying to, to be respectful to the culture and the context in itself. Um, but at the same time, I like to be authoritarian. <laughs> So sometimes I have to say, hey, it's this way and it makes sense. Huh? And, and, and I, I don't want to be nostalgic. But I'm, I'm, it's maybe a positive nostalgia, but I always think that the solution is in the past. Uh, not that you have to do the same, but the source of knowledge is in the past and you have to just find the solution or the idea that makes uh, a positive decision and, 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 and modern decision. Yeah. Well, with these uh, concepts, it also reminds me of other type of projects that you have been doing, which is restaurants. And I ask that because of the scale, but also about the time. Mm -hmm. uh, a restaurant that's entirely done in brass, in a way brass uh, embodies a certain uh, aging. Mm -hmm. It's not something that, well, even if uh, restaurants have, uh, let's say, uh, a faster rate of uh, renovation, is it still something that you would think for a longer time? How it is to operate on this other other scale? Well, I think uh, the, the smaller thing you do, uh, the, the more complicated things are <laughs> because you spend a lot of time, the same amount of time if you do a building of 10,000 square meters or 50 square meters. But um, uh, I, I kind of like the, the idea that I don't talk about interior design kind of thing. Uh, I think architecture can be tackling everything. And um, I hate when you think that you're an interior architect and a general architect and an urbanist. For me, there is no difference uh, because uh, obviously we don't operate the same way and we don't have the same type of knowledge. But from I, I just I, I refuse the idea that you cannot do architecture with architecture is to build and to touch and to feel and to live in and so any scale can be tackle, tackling architecture. So I like to to do some restaurants also my own story is about like each restaurant or each place has a certain story so once we did uh, one in white marble one in brass and the other one is in azulejos and the next one is green and the next one is blue and then the next one is in velvet um, so now we are doing interior pro projects that are super interesting. Uh, for instance, in Radio France, in France, we are renovating and we did uh, six uh, studios, recording studios, and each of them has a certain thinking. One is in felt, one is in light, one in stone. So 
I like playing with radical experiences um, as a memory, and, and so I'm playing. Thank you. Thank you, David.